I'm in grade one. This is my dad, Ryan. Last year, we made a game together called Sissy's Magical Pony Corn Adventure. We made Hi, the game my name's Sissy, Sissy, and I figured love pony corns. They're the best thing in the world because they like ponies. And unicorns. The pony corns! I don't have any pony corns right now, so I'm going to go get some. Come with me, it's my magical pony corn adventure. We made the game at an event called Toad Jam. That's where everybody makes a game in one weekend. These are the things we use to make the game with. A red laptop, a big box of crayons, a stack of paper, a scanner, a microphone, and a bunch of ponies so I can know how to draw a pony. <laughs> On the software side, we used Adobe Photoshop and Flash. Now, these are professional tools, but you could achieve similar results using a free program called Scratch. I do lots of things, like a butterfly, a rainbow, a turtle, and a little girl. And it was my job to tie Cassie's drawings together with a coherent narrative. So I used her rainbows as portals to the different worlds that she created, and then I populated those worlds with her characters. When the game came out, lots of people liked it. We were on TV, we were on the front page of the newspaper, even in the Japanese newspaper. <laughs> This little girl liked our characters so much, she created her own story using the characters. Lots of people have uploaded playthroughs of the game to YouTube. This guy dressed up as the game <laughs> and went to a comic book convention. The Ponycorns game has been featured in festivals around the world. We made t-shirts, buttons, and stuffed animals that looked like my drawings. My mom has been sending them to people around the world. It's really fun making a video game with my dad. I want to do it again. <laughs> Good job, Cassie. I have... Oh. <laughs> So I, I have a craft project for you. Got some smelly markers over there. Do you want to? <laughs> do you want to hop to it? <laughs> Go for it. All right. You don't have to ask her twice. When we collaborated on a video game together, many people found it remarkable that someone as young as Cassie could contribute meaningfully to something as high tech and as complicated as a video game. But my hope is that one day a father making a video game with his daughter will be just a natural way to spend a Saturday afternoon, like. Uh, taking a swimming lesson or doing a homework assignment together. I used to teach technology to elementary school students about 15 years ago. And when Cassie started kindergarten, I was really excited to see how the state of technology education had changed in the intervening 15 years. It hadn't. <laughs> the computers were still old. Teachers were still using lab time as, as a prep period to mark assignments and the students were still consuming the same educational software, ancient stuff, that they'd been using 15 years ago. Because they're facing a future... <laughs> you recognize a few of those, I could tell, yeah. <laughs> because they're still using them, I guarantee you. But because they're facing a future that's filled with knowledge work, our goal should be to help kids become creators, not just consumers. As Douglas Rushkoff puts it, the aim is to program or be programmed but we're not teaching programming. Most public school students don't learn how to program a computer until they're in the 10th or 11th grade in high school, and even then, the course is elective. So some people have noticed this problem. What they're trying to do is solve it by throwing the latest technology into schools at the elementary school level. That's why some schools are campaigning to get iPads into the classrooms as fast as possible. Now, iPads and tablet computers are great. Reading an enhanced textbook on a tablet computer can be a lot more engaging and exciting than reading a print textbook. But reading is a consumptive activity, not a creative one. Researching on the web, watching videos, and answering class polls are all participatory, but we shouldn't mistake participation in the interactive world with mastery over it. it when we see kids using tablet computers, I mean, they're just using them. We say, oh my gosh, it's so amazing how well they've taken to technology. And we clap our hands together and we call them digital natives. Folks, 
These devices have a touch-controlled interface and one button. If we're amazed our kids can use these devices, we're not expecting enough of our kids. The future demands mastery, not just participation. Kids should be taught how to program computers and, and computational thinking in the third grade at the latest. Like, junior kindergarten if we're going to be feisty about it. And it, it's not impossible. I mean, instead of providing tech training to teachers so that they can master it on top of you know, everything else they're busy with, schools can pool the resources to hire and share experts, just like Cassie's school does with their specialist steel pan instructor. We should be teaching kids to be creators, not consumers, masters, not mere participants. It's not enough that our kids are learning from enhanced textbooks, they should be building enhanced textbooks. If we remain consumers, more and more technology will tell us what to do instead of the other way around. So today, when a device comes along that has a touch-controlled interface and one button, we welcome it with open arms. Just as we'll one day welcome our future robot masters with open arms. Best toy, best toy. Hey, does anyone know how to turn this thing off? It's got more than one button. Best toy, best toy. Oh man, I, I wish I'd learned how to program when I was in the third grade. Best toy, best toy, best toy. Ah, ah. 